In these perilous times, see from current events how biblical prophecy is coming to pass in front of our eyes. You're watching In the Last Days, the program that looks at Israel and the end times with teaching from a Hebraic perspective. With Martin and Natalie Blackham, thank you to our friends and partners who make this program possible. Now, here's Martin and Natalie. Shalom, dear friends. Wonderful to be with you. My name is Natalie Blackham, and this is In the Last Days TV program. We had last week David Nekrutman, and today we are carrying on digging in the Word, and we want to speak especially today about the Aaronic blessing, which is something very special and that Jewish people do every day. Oh, every day, I right. was going to say. Okay, this is sort of the, ah. something I'm bringing to the table right now. We yes. can speak about why we do it every day. Right. And as a father, I get a chance to bless my kids on Friday evening with the priestly mm -hmm. blessing. Mm -hmm. So gotta, we'll talk about how are we able to use the priestly blessing as a regular person who's not a priest. Mm -hmm. Very good. And David is also uh, the executive, executive director of the Center of Jewish and Christian Understanding and Cooperation which is based in Efrat in Israel. And so it's very important that we are trying to work, Christian and Jews coming together. We have a common thing, which is amazing, is the Tenar. Right. It's the one big chunk of the Bible. Yes, as from anyone. the Christian side. That's right. it, yeah. So the Tanakh is the whole Bible for the Jewish which people. Is, that's it, which is the five first book of uh, Moses. And after you have the prophets, prophets and, and then the, the writings, what we call the writings, like writings. the Book of Ruth, the Book mm -hmm. of Esther, the Psalms, Proverbs, Psalms. Ecclesiastes, yeah. Ecclesiastes. Sorry, Ecclesiastes. Yes. Yeah. So, you can carry on. I can carry on. Yes, okay. you can carry on. Um, so, it's very interesting for me. Blessing. Mm -hmm. First of all, what is a blessing? If you take the word Hebrew word bracha, there are several. Uh, root words involved in the, in the mm -hmm. concept of a Hebrew word of called blessing. Number one is to, to bend your knee. Mm -hmm. So you're doing it in sort of a, a, a stance of humility. Mm -hmm. It also is brecha, which is a source, is a water source. Mm -hmm. So when you're doing a blessing in a concept of a Jewish thought is you're connecting to the ultimate source of all blessing, and that's God. Mm -hmm. okay, so when we're doing the blessing, it's not me who's doing it. Mm -hmm. right? I don't have any magical powers to help you get healed. At the end of the day, it's really God, as I am a conduit to give blessing. I am connecting to the ultimate source. So that's the concept of, of a bracha, of a blessing. The priestly blessing is a very interesting blessing because it's one of the oldest blessings mm -hmm. in which the Bible. Was, that's it, which was given? Which was given. Go ahead. By Moses? <laughs> no, <laughs> actually, by God. By God. Oh, by God. Yes, in right. in, this is in the book of Numbers. Yes. Okay, the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to Aaron and his sons and tell them, you shall bless the Israelites like this and say to them. Mm -hmm. So God is actually giving the blessing mm -hmm. that Aaron and his kids are supposed to do. And what is the blessing? May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and grant you peace. But there's a little other line that comes in. And so they shall play, place my name over the Israelites and I will bless them. Now the question is, what does it is mean I will part, bless them? Is that part of the blessing? Well, the question is, who, who's blessing who mm -hmm. at the end? Is it God blessing the priest mm -hmm. or is that God is blessing the people? Mm -hmm. Because we just, Aaron. right, this is a, typical Jewish question on, on scriptures, like, I will bless them, what does that mean? Who's them, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So there are two ways of looking at that. But at the end of the day, Aaron, the priestly family, is supposed to bless Israel. Now, when did that take place? During tabernacle times, during the first and second temple periods, mm -hmm. right? But even before, no? Well, before- During was, the desert? Well, it, it was that, well, they had what? The tabernacle. Yes. Okay, okay, remember, sorry, 48, yeah, yeah. there's a tabernacle. Yeah, yeah. Again, there was also a tabernacle when they came in to, with Joshua. Mm -hmm. It was a portable mm -hmm. sanctuary, mm -hmm. right? And there was temple service. And mm -hmm. part of the temple service is that the priest would bless the Israelites every day mm -hmm. with this blessing. So we need, to, we need to know as Christians, because again, some people say, yeah, I mean, I, I know a lot of Christians, we don't need the tabernacle, we don't need the temple, blah, blah, blah. But if you read in, in, in the Hebrew, it's written that I will dwell 
not in it. I will dwell well, with them. With them. I exactly. will establish a sanctuary exactly. and praise you. Mm -hmm. And I, when you do that, I will be in you, actually in you. That's mm -hmm. the actual Hebrew word. Mm -hmm. um, Very important. Right, Very because important. God doesn't need a shrine. No. All right? We're not pagan cultures. Mm -hmm. The purpose of what we're doing is to glorify God. What God is doing is being in us, mm -hmm. and we, we need to sense that and connect with that and be led by that. Mm -hmm. what, what I love also is like uh, one of the things that I've learned when I started to learn the, the Jewish way, it, God delights, first of all, to be in connection with us, but he loves also each other to be in connection with each other. So he's working, so, which is what you say, is like, is exactly there. He give it to Aaron, so Aaron can give it to somebody else. Right. But so this is very... That's what, what's very important here is that who's given the task to do this? Mm -hmm. Aaron. Yet, on Friday night, as I said... Yes. It's I, you now doing it. I invoke these verses mm -hmm. and bless my kids. How can I do that if this was... It says it in the Bible. If we take the Bible very seriously, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? You want to be fundamental about it. Yeah. How, can, how do I have the license mm -hmm. to use that, mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. So first you have to sort of I'll give you some background on how, the temp, how this blessing was done in the temple. First of all, um, the priest would go ahead and bless them, putting their hands out. Mm -hmm. If you ever saw Spock from Star Trek, mm -hmm. right, he would do this. This is where it comes from, right? So anyone who's a Star Trek fan, if you're going like this, this is it. It goes back thousands of years. And then... From the Aaronic blessing. From the Aaronic blessing, yeah. okay? They would do the blessing. They would say all three verses at once. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then do individual verses where someone would then respond, Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen was never used in the temple. Okay. Okay, it's very important. Okay. Okay. The response was, mm -hmm. Baruch Shem Kibod Machuto Le'olom Va'el. Blesses his name mm -hmm. and his kingdom forever and ever. That is the response to the priestly blessing in the temple. Yes. All right? Why? Amen, in essence, is taking a blessing and making it personal. Mm -hmm. That's what amen does. Mm -hmm. if you, yeah. I know in English translations, like, it's usually with... so be it or I agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that means the function of amen is that I am taking what this person is doing and personalizing it. Mm -hmm. But what's the purpose of the of the uh, priestly blessing is a blessing for the entire nation. Mm -hmm. So I can't say amen because then I'm personalizing a communal blessing. Which is again very important again in the Jewish way, you are not just one individual, you are part. Exactly. Of, yeah. We are part of a yeah, whole. Yeah, yeah. The unity of us a people. are the people. Mm -hmm. right? we, are not, we, we are not supposed to go ahead and personalize that, even in our prayers. I always say, if you want to understand the Jewish people, mm -hmm. you have to understand what they pray. Lex arande, lex crindende. What we pray is what we believe. And if you pay attention to our prayers, it's always in the plural. Mm -hmm. Hardly do we ever pray as an individual. Please do this for me. Please do this for me. Mm -hmm. I need heal. No, no, it's heal us. Mm -hmm. It's heal everybody. And I'm part of the community. But still you have, still you have a personal relationship with God. Of course. Yeah. But we need to know because a lot of Christians think that the Jewish people don't have a personal relationship with God, which is totally... It's not true. ...is ignorance. Right, it's not true. Yeah. But the thing is, is that uh, as you have something called the unity of the church, we have something called the unity of the synagogue. Mm -hmm. We are one body. Mm -hmm. Something that affects some other Jew in the world. And this you can see even practically today, that if something happens, anti-Semitism is rising, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So what do we do? We, thank God we have a Jewish agency. Mm -hmm. They come in, they rescue the Jews yeah. there, and they bring them to Israel. Yeah. I mean, we can, we can see it. When we come here, when I, uh, for the first time when I went to the uh, Day of Independence and all the parties during the night in Jerusalem, it was like, my gosh, it's like one people. It's not just a nation. It's not just a nation. It's one people. And I saw it on the street. It's like everybody is connected with each other, even if they keep their individuality. Right, but if that means he's hurting, I have to hurt as well. Yeah, yeah. There's a famous thing, the famous joke of a, of a rabbi and his wife, the Rebbitson, walk into a doctor's office, but the re, the, his wife is going through something that's really, really bad. Mm -hmm. He says to the doctor, can you please help us and cure us? Mm -hmm. He says, who, you're both in, in, in pain? No, no, my wife is, but I, we need to 
please cure us. This is lovely. Okay. So this is the same concept that we do in Judaism is that every Jew is very important in the body of the synagogue and something's happening to them that's awful. We have to take means and measures to do that. But mm -hmm. if, well, if they're also uplifting the community, we benefit from that. Mm -hmm. Someone is doing amazing stuff. Which is so true. Like even spiritually, I mean like in the reality, we can't live just by ourselves. And I think, okay, this is interesting also, I, I like to think, and you see the Catholic the community is very important and the Protestant, the individual is very important, but we need both. W yes, we are very important and you are unique, but you are part of a community. Right. And these two things need to be coming together. Because right. I live in a Catholic country and I can see that and I, we live in a Protestant, so there is a like, good part and bad part in, in, in the thing, but we need both. Right, I would even go further. I, a lot of people say, what's Jewish about Jewish prayer? Mm -hmm. and, and the concept of what the unifying uh, anchor of Jewish mm -hmm. prayer that makes it Jewish mm -hmm. is our liturgy. I can walk into any synagogue and I will have the same template of liturgy mm -hmm. no, matter, no matter where I go. Mm -hmm. That's what makes it Jewish. In addition to that, but we again, also have the Torah portion of the week. That's it. Right? The Torah portion of the week, which is we divide up the five books of Moses mm -hmm. into weekly portions. We finish from Genesis to the end of Deuteronomy. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the Feast of Tabernacle, the holiday called the Shmini Yatzer, the eighth day, mm -hmm. which is also called Simchat Torah, mm -hmm. which is a celebration of the Torah, meaning that we finish the annual cycle of the five books of Moses. Mm -hmm. I can walk into any synagogue and you know that they are going I to I know read. they're going to be yeah. reading that Torah mm -hmm. portion. So the unifying anchor of the Jewish people is its prayer mm -hmm. in the synagogue and its, its corporate liturgy mm -hmm. and ritual. But I want to say also, because I know how Christians think, oh, but you know that prayers is just prayer. No, 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 no. It's taken from Psalms and, and different passages. So it's like, you, you've done like... We copy and paste. Yeah, exactly. Do, right? Exactly. If we're taking our terms it's, today, yeah. if I had a Microsoft Word and I'm building up a, a, a prayer, I take a, a verse from Isaiah and a verse from Jeremiah and two verses from Psalms. They have the same themes. We bring it together as a devotion. And that most of our prayers are like that. There are certain prayers that have been uh, introduced mm -hmm. through the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of the rabbis mm -hmm. uh, as a personal prayer, but we adopt it corporately mm -hmm. into our mm -hmm. into our but this, uh, is, this is very important because I know that some people I heard people saying they don't know the Bible and I'm like excuse me come and live here and you will see they know the Bible much better than we know and and again we need to, to connect together and do some work together and there is so many things who are said and 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 it's not true it's like a lot of it is ignorance so right but I want to point out, so let's go through sort of a, a development here because as I said back, the, the prayer book is a way to understand the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. okay. So every day in our prayers, twice in our morning prayers, mm -hmm. we actually invoke the priestly blessing. I didn't know that. Okay. We have a section in the morning which we praise God for returning our souls back into our bodies. Mm -hmm. Thank you for protecting us during the evening. Uh, we actually have a blessing of going to the restroom. Mm -hmm. Thank God everything is working correctly. Uh, and then we have a blessing over the words to actually read the Torah, to engage in, in the word, word of God. There's a blessing before that, mm -hmm. okay? And I think I talked about this in, our other, in the other program that I did with you. So it talks about, bless are you Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has made us holy through his commandments, who has commanded us to engage in the word of God, okay? That is a blessing. And in part of that is the sanctification of God. I am doing this to sanctify God. Mm -hmm. So it's a biblical commandment to engage in God's word. When I have a biblical commandment, I make a blessing. My blessing continues and says, please Lord our God, make the words of your Torah sweet in our mouths and the mouths of your people, the house of Israel, so that we, our descendants and their descendants and the descendants of your people, the house of Israel, may all know your name and study the word for its own sake. Blessed are you Lord who teaches the word to his people Israel. God is the ultimate revealer of his word. Mm -hmm. Didn't stop at Sinai, right? We got mm -hmm. the Torah, but to understand the revelation from Torah, God reveals it with us when we engage and mm -hmm. we're supposed to have a sweet tooth. We're supposed to be addicted to God's word. Now we just made Good. this blessing. We mm -hmm. made this blessing and what mm -hmm. we're supposed to do? 
supposed to engage in the word of the Torah, mm -hmm. all right? So mm -hmm. right after, there's a, a third blessing, blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has chosen us from all the peoples and given his Torah, blessed are you, Lord, giver of the Torah. Mm -hmm. And we read the priestly blessing. Mm -hmm. It is the passage from the five books of Moses that we read. It's very interesting that you would invoke, you could pick any, any biblical passage in the Bible, and I could have fulfilled my biblical mandate of engaging in the word of Torah, mm -hmm. yet we, we use the priestly blessing. In addition to that, we also take uh, something from the Talmud, something called the Mishnah, mm -hmm. something called the actual Talmud, which is sort of a explanation mm -hmm. towards the Mishnah plus other things. Here, here this is the very interesting. These are the, this comes from the Mishnah Peah. These are the things from which there is no fixed measure. The corner of the field, first fruits, the appearances before the Lord on festivals, mm -hmm acts of kindness and the study of the word. Mm -hmm. Okay, so inherent in this is both the study of the word and the acts of kindness. And then we take another passage that says, these are the things whose fruits we eat in this world, but whose full reward awaits us in the world to come. So already I'm acknowledging that there's a world to come, there's gonna be a resurrection inherent in those words. And what are these commandments that we do biblically that I will have the full reward in the world to come and part of it here, honoring parents acts of kindness, mm -hmm. arriving early and late, and staying late in the house of study, hospitality to strangers, visiting the sick, helping the needy bride, attending to the dead, devotion and prayer, and bringing peace between neighbors and husband and wife, and of course, the study of Torah. Mm -hmm. So inherent in studying, engaging in the word of the Torah, I also have to do acts and affirmation of that faith. Mm -hmm. All right, sounds familiar? Yes, that's just in your I head, can't yeah. just read it and not do anything. I have to be executing God's will here on earth. But part of that is engaging in the word of the Torah. But everything is preceded with the Aaronic blessing. Mm -hmm. This is amazing. So we invoke that there mm -hmm. in my personal prayers mm -hmm. in the morning when I arrive in synagogue before we praise God. S Sorry, can I have, do you, can you do this prayer at home or do you sure. have to go to you don't synagogue? Have, of course, there is a special uh, beauty and uh, when, you're together. when you're corporate prayer mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. there the divine presence is waiting when you have 10 people gathering mm -hmm. and praying to God. God is waiting for you. Mm -hmm. Where you, as an individual, you're bringing down the presence of God. Mm -hmm. It's a difference. So you always want to, first of all, do it corporately a, it's better to have corporate prayer because people are coming together. It's a sense of sanctification of God publicly. Mm -hmm. That's the point of it all. Mm -hmm. all right? Now, there's a special 18 blessings that we do. It's called the actual petition part of it. Before the petition, we praise God through Psalms. Mm -hmm. okay? We do the Shema. We accept mm -hmm. God's kingdom here on earth. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we petition God. You can't petition before you praise. Sure. Okay. Ooh, yeah. Okay, you probably see this in the Lord's Prayer. Yeah. All right? And like even when when I've learned, you know, like knowing nothing and going with some Christians, they say, you have to praise Him first. You can't go and ask something, you know. It's, it's not only praising, it's, it's part also of... accepting His kingdom. Mm -hmm. That means I make God my king sure. every day. Mm -hmm. So I'm praising Him, He's my king, and now I have a few requests, mm -hmm. okay? So the, actually the last blessing in what we call the 18 blessings, these petitional prayers called the Amidah in mm -hmm. Hebrew, we, we have the priests who, if they're priests in the congregation, mm -hmm. they go up in Israel, especially every day we go through this in Israel. Mm -hmm. It's a little different than the diaspora, but in Israel, ever since statehood, priests go up every day in the congregation and bless the people the priestly blessing. I saw that in the yeshiva. Okay, so, it was very touching. But what's the difference? What's the difference? That after each verse, mm -hmm. we say amen. Okay. We don't say, Baruch Shem Kavod Machot Aleilam, blessed be his name and his kingdom forever and ever, because this blessing is for whoever is there. We're supposed mm -hmm. to personally take that in. So we say amen. So that's the difference. This is the modification of what happened from the temple into the synagogue. Now we know that the synagogue existed during temple period, mm -hmm. either whether it be first temple or second temple. Mm -hmm. But the synagogue lifestyle was that if you were going to pray and we're going to invoke the priestly blessing, it has to be a little bit different than it happens in the temple times because in the temple it's about the entire nation. Mm -hmm. When it's talking about corporate prayer in the community, it's for them. 
So then how do we make the differentiation? A, the priests do not say God's name in full. Mm -hmm. We would say, they would say Adonai, but they wouldn't say what we say, um, Jehovah. We, they wouldn't mm -hmm. say that. So uh, that's another modification. Oh, when because doing they the were saying it only in the temple. They were saying it in the temple, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So here in the synagogue, we make a few modifications so we can go ahead and bring the pre priestly blessing mm -hmm. to the people. Now, my theory is, the reason why is, especially during the second temple period, which you find that the custom has already been developed, mm -hmm. is that we Because were, they had already an exile, isn't it? We already had an exile, mm -hmm. but we never had full Jew Jewish sovereignty over the land of Israel besides the Maccabean period. We were always under the thumb of a foreign government. It was Darius okay. who brought yep. us at, who okay. allowed mm -hmm. the temple, but we were mm -hmm. under his government until the Maccabees, till the festival of Hanukkah, yeah. in that short period of time in the Maccabean period. The that's Maccabees, the these rebels. Right, <laughs> this that's rebel. it, these rebels, right, these Jewish rebels. But at, towards the end of the second temple period, we were under Roman, Roman occupation, mm -hmm. right? So I think there needed to be a partnership. I love, sorry, I'm just thinking about these rebels, the Maccabees. They've done so much. Yes. But they, need, they needed to rebel, to, to rebel against Again, we what were was going. We were outlawed yeah. to read mm. the Torah publicly. We couldn't keep Jewish law. If we were caught circumcising no our kids, no so keeping the Sabbath or reading the Torah, mm. reading the word, God's word, we would be killed. Mm. And people don't really realize that, I think. Again, it's like mm -hmm. ignore, I mean, a lot of people, we don't know our history. We don't know this uh, part with Hanukkah. I say very often to my kids and they always laugh, I say, you know, you can't have Christmas if you don't have Hanukkah. If Hanukkah didn't happen, that's it, finished, Israel was gone. Right, you would still be wearing togas. Right. Yes, you're right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so thank God we had the Maccabees to come in and bring back uh, biblical faith to Israel. Mm -hmm. So there were modifications made to the priestly blessing uh, in the synagogue. Mm -hmm. So you already see that the priestly blessing was able to be brought in on a community level. Mm -hmm. Even though it was designated to the area, how was that done? Because of the modifications that were done to it. So it doesn't look like we're, we are sort of representing the priest in the temple time. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have no priest in the congregation, the leader of the congregation is able to recite these blessings as well. Mm -hmm. He doesn't go and put his hands out. He just recites these blessings, and then there's an amen after each, after each verse. Now, how do they know, again, a silly question maybe for you, but how do you know that you are from a priestly family? Oh, uh, well, first of Did all, really many, yeah, many people can trace their lineage. Mm -hmm. Also, names are very important. Mm -hmm. Katz mm -hmm. is Kohen Tzedek in Hebrew. It's an acronym for Kohen Tzedek. There are other names that are involved in that, but most priests can trace back their lineage, and they know that. Mm -hmm. um, in addition, there's a third time we invoke the priestly blessing. Okay. okay. Before. Oh, for Shabbat? No. Oh, no, in the evening? I'm talking about our daily, daily life okay. before we go to bed. Mm. We ask for God's protection. Part of that is the priestly blessing. But I want you to understand, so what is the exegesis yeah. of the priestly blessing? So this is actually in the, in the last blessing in the Amidah, mm -hmm. and it explains, and this is the liturgy behind it. Mm -hmm. Grant peace, mm -hmm. goodness and blessing, life, grace, loving kindness and compassion. To us and all Israel, your people, bless us, our Father, all as one, with the light of your face. For the light of your face, we, you have given us, Lord our God, the Torah of life and love of kindness, righteousness, blessing, compassion, life, peace. May it be good in your eyes to bless us and all your people, Israel, at every time and every hour with your peace. Mm -hmm. Okay? So the, actually, if you pay attention to the last word, peace, it's the last word of the priestly blessing. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, shalom. right, shalom. shalom. Mm -hmm. In addition, you see what? Acts of kindness mm -hmm. and studying God's word. Mm -hmm. Now I understand why the priestly blessing is used as the first biblical passage after I do the blessing of the Torah. Because what's the purpose? To study in God's word and to affirm that faith by doing acts of kindness, mm -hmm. right? And what, what's ultimately about it? It's God's protection, His blessing over us. So we utilize that before we retire to, before we go to sleep. So who is doing that? I know you do it. Is it only the Orthodox Jews? I'm sorry, but like I'm asking questions that people right. might have on the other side. Well, I can only, I'm only speaking from, from an Orthodox Jewish perspective, mm -hmm. okay? Um, 
again, other denominations will have different ways of doing the priestly blessing. Mm -hmm. But I think as a father, mm -hmm. I want you to understand, this is to me the mo a beautiful part of our tradition. We know blessing children is very important in the Bible. Jacob does it, mm -hmm. right, to his kids. Even Jacob's father, right, Isaac, mm -hmm. blessed both his mm -hmm. kids, right? But when Jacob blesses his kids, um, we see that as the source of what we do Friday night when we bless our kids. We're continuing that Jacob tradition. Of family, course, Jacob didn't family, use... Family tradition. Family tradition. Mm -hmm. Of course, we know that Jacob didn't bless with the priestly blessing, but the mm -hmm. concept of blessing your kids goes all the way back to Jacob. The adoption of the priestly blessing as far as what happens on a Friday evening of, of parents blessing their kids, scholarly, we don't know when that happened. I would say that that actually happened sort of towards the end of Second Temple period. Definitely after Second Temple period, we see there's custom developing. It actually appears in the liturgy of the sea door. Mm -hmm. But what, what is inherent in it is, understand, when I said to you beforehand, Baruch Shem Kavod Machotol Le'olam Ve'ed, the communal response to the priestly blessing, bless are your, bless are, blesses his name and his kingdom forever and ever. Mm -hmm. It's about kingdom. It's about covenant. Why am I blessing my kids? Because I want to pass over mm -hmm. the tradition of studying the word and affirming that faith through acts of kindness, and I want to give that over to my kids. My kids should take that in. That study of word and kingdom and covenant is all in that blessing. Mm -hmm. that's and that's what I do on Friday night. Mm -hmm. I have that honor of doing that. Israel is a blessing for all of us. And okay, thank you, David, again no to come and Pleasure. to speak with us. And uh, we will carry on giving you some more uh, teaching of, of what, you know, the, the strength that we can have or the thing which is in the Word of God and that we want to learn and want to know more. And uh, from David and from me, we are blessing you from Israel. And don't forget, we are living in the last days. You've been watching In the Last Days, a TV program with Martin and Natalie Blackham, the program that looks at Israel and the end times with teaching from a Hebraic perspective. If you would like to financially support the program or find out about conferences, meetings, or ministry products, then please contact us with the details on your screen. Visit our easy-to-use website at www.inthelastdays.com and register for our free e-newsletter Get the latest news from Israel, product information, online video teaching, or watch today's TV program at a time that's convenient to you. Thank you again, friends and partners, for making this program possible. See you same time, same station for the next program from In the Last Days.